So recently I posted my review of the JG Maker Artist D Kickstarter 3D printer. And in this review, I got to the point where I was testing the extrusions and I realized that I could not get consistent extrusions out of either of these extruders. And I ended that video saying that I could no longer further test it because I really couldn't count on the quality of the prints I was getting out of this printer. What I wanted to do was follow that up a little bit with some more analysis and some more testing to see if I could figure out exactly what was causing the problem. Now for this video, I spent most of my time actually testing and so I wasn't filming everything I was doing because the filming process sometimes kind of hinders the testing process. Now I will have some stills and I will have some clips of some of the work I was doing, but overall this is just going to be walking you through my analysis of all of the things I tested to try to fix the extrusion on this printer. So let's get started. So before it was all said and done, I did six different tests on this printer to try to analyze what exactly was going on with the extruder and to see if I could actually fix the problem with the parts that I had on hand. Test number one, the stepper motor test. So what I wanted to know was the stepper motor itself not providing enough power to the extruder or was it skipping steps? So what I did is I replaced the stepper motor it came with, which was a one amp NEMA 17, and I replaced it with a one and a half amp NEMA 17. So I had the electronics case open. The first thing I did, I wanted to test to make sure was the voltage correct, the reference voltage correct for a one amp stepper. It was, I believe it was running at 0.71 volts, which is just right for the a 4988s with the 100 ohm sense resistor that they have on those stepper drivers. So that was first correct. And then when I went on and put on the one and a half amp stepper motor, of course I had to increase that reference voltage, which I did, which gave me a one and a half amp stepper motor in that extruder. So I did my testing again, just like I showed you in the last video. And what I found out was that I really had no difference in my results. I was still getting the under extrusion primarily in fact, it may have even made it a little bit worse. It's difficult to say due to the variance that I'm seeing in the extrusion, anywhere from you know just a couple of millimeters to all the way up above 10 millimeters difference in extrusion, but I do think it may have made it a little bit worse. And that may be due to what is possibly the root cause of this entire issue. So test number two. Well, first of all, I want to thank Scott Worthington for this idea and for some of the other back and forth that he provided for this testing. If you know Scott, he's very active in the community for this printer and the community of other printers because the guy has a lot of printers and has a lot of experience. So first of all, big thanks to him for his ideas and the back and forth him and I were able to do. So this one was the change out the heat block and the nozzle test. And so what I did is I took apart the nozzle that it comes with. That allowed me to separate the nozzle from the heat break. And then I assembled my own new nozzle, heater block, and heat break that I could attach myself onto this existing extruder. And the idea behind this was, well, what if we're having either a heating issue or a clogging issue in the actual nozzle area, the heat block area itself? And this allowed me to test that. What I found was that that new assembly worked identically in terms of the extruder performance to the one that was already on here. I got good clean extrusions. Uh, they look nice, but I still ran into the extrusion issues with the variances that I've talked about with not being able to get a consistent extrusion out of that nozzle. So at least I have taken the new nozzle assembly that they've designed out of the equation but am still seeing the problem. So no luck with test number two either. So for test number three, what I want to do, let's play with the filament temperatures a bit to see if we can characterize a little bit more what's going on. Obviously, as I raise the filament temperature, I'm going to have softer filament and the extruder is going to have to work less to extrude filament successfully. And as I decrease the temperature, it's going to have to work harder because the filament's not going to be as soft. So I had been running at 205C, which is the correct temperature I run all the time on my Creality printers for filament one standard color filament. What I was getting there, I ran four separate extrusion tests. As you can see here, I've been quite busy. 
but I ran four separate extrusion tests there. So what I found was that the average short, the average under extrusion I was getting was about three and a half millimeters. And there was a range there of maybe one millimeter to six millimeters. And then again, it's all averaged out to three and a half millimeters. Then I did the same test, four separate extrusions of 100 millimeters, and I did it at 195 degrees. So again, this should make it worse. And it did. My average short extrusion was five and a half millimeters. So again, it's what I'm seeing that it is uh, having a tougher time pushing out that filament. Then raise the temperature 10 degrees, 215 C on the nozzle. And my average short this time was only a quarter of a millimeter. So that's what I want to see. I want to see that well under one millimeter shortness. You don't even want that. But uh, what that meant was that I was only getting a range of it being right on to zero to it being off by only like a millimeter. And again, that's not too bad. And it does give me that correlation between filament temperature and it having to work harder to actually extrude filament. So keep that in mind as we're going forward. So now we're on to test number four, and test number four came from a lot of people in the comments, as well as Scott and I talking, of what about the spring? What about the spring in that extruder? Is it too loose? Should you be putting a tighter spring in the extruder? And maybe that's why it's slipping. Well, what I found was, is that if I replace the little knob that you can push in to loosen that extruder, if I replace that with a screw, I can actually tighten that extruder all the way down and what that will mean is that the drive gear the hob gear whatever you'd like to call it will be pushed all the way against the filament at all times that it will not be able to loosen during the extrusion process so i put a screw in there i tightened it down and i found this to be a much worse case so my average at that point went all the way to 14 and a quarter millimeters short if I tighten the extruder all the way. And my hypothesis here is that by tightening it down, I made it where that filament, when it couldn't extrude, it couldn't do anything, it couldn't budge. And so what it would do is just slip. It would just slip that extrusion and it wouldn't be able to do anything with it. And so definitely adding a tighter spring would not make things better here. In fact, it could make things a lot worse. Let's go on to test number five. Test number five, I'm like, okay, well, what about the extruder itself? Well, there's not much to the extruder in this printer. The extruder is pretty much a idler, a drive gear, push them up against each other, and you're extruding filament. It's pretty much the same thing you'll see in almost all Bowden setups, where it's just pushing filament from one side. It's not a dual gear extruder. So the only thing I could really do there was to see if I replace that drive gear with a different drive gear would I get better results? So I went, again, looking through my stack of spare parts and seeing what I had. So there's not a whole lot of variation in what that drive gear can look like. In fact, the only one I really found that would work in this particular situation, I did find a drive gear that had more spokes on it. This would allow more surface area as it's trying to push through for it to grab onto. Now, as you go more spokes, what you end up is they're not quite as sharp, there's not quite as deep, so there is a bit of a trade-off, but it was something to try. So I tried with that new one that I found. And with that one, what I found was, again, it made it worse. And I'm not talking about worse on average. What I'm talking about is that the variation in how bad it was off was much worse. So I was getting variation anywhere from five millimeters off all the way up to 20 millimeters off. And I really couldn't control the amount of slippage I was seeing, that it would just slip more. So apparently having additional spokes there was not helping the situation, that the sharper spokes seem to do a lot better than having more of them. Now I did find one other drive gear I wanted to try. It was one millimeter bigger in diameter than the one that was on there. The one that's on there is an 11 millimeter diameter drive gear. I found a 12 millimeter one and it will not fit. There's not enough room in that assembly to hold a bigger drive gear. So trying to make it tighter by putting a bigger drive gear would not work just again, because the way that's designed, there's not extra room in there. So we're down to our final test and this one's kind of uneventful. So I did a hot end temperature accuracy test. I wanted to know 
well, what if we're misreporting our temperatures? What if when we think we're at 210, 205, whatever temperature we're printing at, what if we're lower? So what if it's not really the extruder's fault? Maybe we're trying to print too cool. So I grabbed my multimeter. I had, the multimeter I have does have a temperature probe in there. So, and I would put that probe as close to where the printer's probe was. So I would put it in the hole. I would put it near that mounting area uh, and, and clamp it down. So it would get as close to the printer's reading as possible. And on both of my tests, on both this one and this one, I found that it was accurate, almost spot on to what the printer was measuring. So we are not seeing a problem with the heating of the printer. So now that I've been through all six, and again, these were the order that I did them. I maybe could have presented them in a better order, but this was the order that I actually did the test. And if you look back over my tests, I think one thing becomes very clear. What we have here is an extruder that slips. And what that means is, is that the way it's designed, it's just slipping that gear when it cannot push it hard enough. So rather than the stepper motor being able to put all of its power into that filament to make sure that it extrudes at a constant rate, it's just slipping that gear. The way that I would fix this is obviously you'd have to have a tighter spot for that filament to go through to where the gear would actually be able to bite into it properly. Or the way I would like to see it fixed is actually by doing uh, the dual gears to where it was grabbing it on both sides of that filament and then there would really be no chance because you'd have gears biting into that filament on both sides. But either way, I don't see any way that with the existing design without making modifications to the actual metal that is in the extruder that you're going to be able to extrude consistently unless you find exactly the right temperature for that filament on this printer. Now, one thing that backs up what I've seen, because I've seen plenty of people comment, you know, this is just a problem that Chris is having. It isn't widely reported. Uh, other people are reporting that theirs look just fine. Well, number one, I don't think I've seen any other channel that has tried to calibrate the extruder. So I don't believe that anyone has really tested what I've tested. Number two, go check out the Jess Vlad review of this printer. If you go to the end of that video, you will see that in multiple prints, he is complaining that he is having print quality issues, that it is looking like under extrusion. And what he tried to do in some of his last prints was add temperature to it in order for it to extrude better. As he found though, as you add temperature, you over melt your filament. There's not enough cooling for the filament. You'll start melting your part. One of these things will happen. You can't just add temperature and good good prints you need that temperature range in order to dial in your prints correctly you need that 20 to 30 c that can print cooler or print hotter depending on how fast you're going depending on what you're printing am i printing vase mode do i have a lot of overhangs a lot of this ties into you getting a good print out of your printer and you need to be able to count on your extruder to actually extrude the filament within kind of the specified range by the manufacturer. So again, go check out Just Vlad's video. Check out the end of that video. I'll include a link up here so that you can follow and see what he saw. So I'm guessing if I actually were to ask some of these other reviewers or even watch more reviews, which I haven't obviously watched them all, that there would be more people that saw under extrusion that either just thought that it was just I haven't tuned it yet, I don't have a good profile for it yet, and so they kind of either ignored it or wrote it off because we're used to seeing that in printers that a lot of printers out of the box just aren't tuned very well, so it's under extruding a little bit, no big deal. But they didn't chase it down, they didn't actually verify that that's what was going on. So take a look, again, I'm not calling anyone out here, again, this is a common occurrence, but I just wanna point out, I don't think this is isolated to my printer. I just don't think it's been reported yet. So I think I've covered this printer just about as much as I want to right now. People ask, have I heard from JG Maker yet? I have not heard from them directly. I do believe it's a Chinese holiday right now, so maybe they're involved in that, and maybe that's why I haven't heard from them directly. Again, I have talked to Scott Worthington, who has been working very closely with JG Maker about this. As far as I know, he's on the same page with me about 
uh, the back and forth that him and I have done. And I think he did some testing and was able to verify this more or less with what I have been seeing. But I will allow him to comment on that himself in the comments down below or in the JG Maker Facebook group, whatever he'd like to do. So I appreciate you guys tuning in again. Thank you for allowing me to spend a little bit more time taking a look at this. Thank you for your suggestions in the group and in the comments about some of the issues I'm seeing. I hope that this is enough to put this to bed. Uh, I, I really don't think I want to spend any more time debugging this at this point because I'm very confident in what I've presented here. The tests I've done have been very thorough. I've followed the scientific method as much as possible. And as always, the, the way I present my data is trying to be very transparent so that other people can reproduce what I've done. If you have any questions about this process, please ask them in the comments down below, and I will be sure to reply to those comments as much as I possibly can. Again, thanks for watching the channel. Thanks for joining me here again. I'm Chris, and this has been Curzy Fabrications. I'll see you next time.